Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, stand to your feet. Everybody, stand to your feet. This is the day that the Lord has made. What you going to do? Oh, I heard one person say rejoice. Come on, somebody say, what are we going to do? We're going to rejoice and be glad in it because if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, somebody say, where? Where? Where in the world would we be? But from the rising of the sun to the setting of that same sun, we're going to give him glory. Somebody shout glory, young glory. people. Glory, oh, glory. that was sweet. Come on, say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31, 2 and 4 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn you unto me. Ain't that a good scripture? God's love drew us. His kindness drew us. Hallelujah. And we give him glory for that. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for being so good to us in spite of us. Hallelujah. You've still been good to us. Brought us through a long week, some ups and downs, but God, we can say we made it. Hallelujah. We can shout glory to your land. God, because if it had not been for you, God, protecting us from danger seen and unseen, you are our Abba Father, Daddy. Hallelujah. You are the God that's omniscient. You know everything. You're omnipotent, God. You have all power in your hand. We thank you, Lord, for being omnipresent. You're right here with us because all you need is two or three gathered in your name. And I know there's some people at home right now, God, gathered in your name, ready to give you glory this early morning sunrise service. Somebody's at home on their couch, maybe in their car, ready to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord, for these young people who pressed their way out, God, to give you glory today. They believe that when praises go up, blessings do come down for them too, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anoint them, God, because somebody needs a song, God. Somebody needs a word, and we believe that one word from you can change any situation. We give you glory for that. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful musicians, God. Thank you for their skill and their ability. Now, anoint them, God. God, hallelujah. God, help them to break the yokes today, God. Let somebody say, I'm changed because of that high-sounding symbol, that key keyboard, strings, and organ. Hallelujah. Anoint them today, God. Anoint the videographers, Jesus. Anoint the sound, man. Help us to get together on one accord, God. And God, bless the word, God, that will be presented today, Father Lord. Anoint that man, God. Oh, God, let that word change their life, God. There is victory in Jesus. Somebody say, victory in Jesus. Come on, say it again. Say, there's victory. And we believe that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. No yokes, no chains holding us down, God. We will bless you. We will bless you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for lives being changed. We thank you for that soul that will be saved to say, what must I do, Lord? Oh, God, to see that kingdom, God. What must I do, God? Father God, how do we thank you, Lord, for the A-top family, God, that's watching, God. Bless them today, God. Anoint this world, God. Bless this world, Jesus. They need a Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, God, they need a friend. They need a comforter, God. And let them receive it through this virtual service. We give you glory and honor and praise. We will say, I will bless the Lord at when? At all times. And his praises shall be what? In my mouth. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen and amen. Come on, young people. You ready? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Let's see. If you're able to stand at home, you want to stand up. Come on. Let's move together. Let's move together, everybody. Yeah. Come on. Let's give it up for the young people as they come today. Yes, sir.
because he's done so much for me. How about you this morning? Wherever you are, just pause right here and give God a great big hand clap of praise. For he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. And for that, you should be glad. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Anointed Temple of Praise Outreach Ministries broadcast. We are so delighted that you are with us this morning. Uh, again, we miss you, Atop family, dearly. And we hope all is well with you and yours. Uh, we bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we uh, know that we are going to get through this thing. Amen. We are going to make it through this COVID-19 season. And when we do, and when we gather here together again, oh, what a time. What a time, what a time it shall be. Uh, visitors, thank you for joining in with us today. Uh, our services begin at 945 virtually each Sunday morning. And when we meet again, uh, uh, probably 945 also. So until we meet in person, thank you for joining us virtually on this morning. Don't forget, as members of the Christian church, each Sunday we partake uh, in the uh, Beth, uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus by partaking of the emblems together of the blood and of the wine, so of the blood and of the body. So if you would have not done so already, please gather something to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection. At the end of the service, we will commemorate that occasion together. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you, and we love you. Eight ATOP members, have you had the opportunity to join us for prayer? Dial in each Tuesday from 7 o'clock to 7.15 a.m. Central Time for Anointed Inspirations in the Morning with Dr. Murray. And for intercessory prayer each Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. The call-in number is 605-475-3220. Access code 412-771-POUND. Power up with prayer each Tuesday and Wednesday. Virtual Bible study continues each Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time via Facebook Live. Or you can join in on Wednesday at 12 noon by calling in to 712-770-4010, access code 718-422-POUND. Each week we discover biblical principles to help enrich us to live more productive lives. Join us Mondays on Facebook Live or Wednesdays by phone for Bible study. It's time to hunger and thirst for the Word. Middle and high school students during the month of July, you can participate in Hunger and Thirst Games Youth Bible Study. Join via Zoom each Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. It promises to be exciting. The meeting ID is 780-3264-2452. The password is 6ZNXWC. The world will be watching as you hunger and thirst after the Word of God. Ministry volunteers are vital to the life of our congregation. This month's first responder salute is to the Golden Ministry as well as the Ushers and Greeters Ministries. Our Golden Ministry was founded by Sister Carolyn Mitchell and is currently led by Sister Betty Ratcliffe. This energetic group of seniors worships, studies, works, and travels together. They assist grieving families during the past and feed hungry families with Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets. Our golden ministry is living life like it's golden. Our ushers under the leadership of Sister Daphne Robinson and greeters make sure all of our members and visitors are welcomed and comfortable as they worship each time the doors of the church are open for service. What would we do without you? Thanks for all that you do. Hey, hey, hey. In-person worship is on the way. ATOP's transition team is planning phase one for re-entry to worship. We will have specific guidelines and information on our website soon. Go to www.anointedtemple.org for re-entry information. It's time to cast your ballot at ATOP, July 17th to August 1st for the upcoming election. Can't make it to early voting? Then go to www.shelbyvote.com and request and submit your absentee ballot by July 30th. You can also register to vote on that same site. This is a critical year for change. Exercise your right to vote today. Heroes worship at ATOP. Hats off to Brother Charles Lapsley, Director of Nursing at Regional One. 
who was recognized and featured in Memphis Magazine May 2020. Sister Shanta Chavez selected as Nurse of the Year at the Memphis VA Medical Center and Dr. Tamika Love honored by UT Health Science Center as the physical therapist dedicated to improving the quality of life in COVID-19 patients. ATOP is proud of you. Keep serving with excellence. Okay, ATOP, keep the love flowing and have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Praise God for our announcements. Good morning. Good morning, all of you here in the building. And good morning to you that are joining us virtually. It is time for prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If I could get a little bow down music. Amen. Bless the Lord. It is so good. Woo. It's so good. To be able to still audibly call on the name of the Lord. So what I want you to do. What I want you to do. I want you. Whatever you're doing, I just want you to stop. Wherever your mind is, I want you to free your mind. If God has been good to you, I just want you to bow down. If you can't bow down physically, just bow down in your mind. I know there's a lot going on, but God has been so good. He deserves all of our praise and he deserves all of our worship. And we just want to enter in this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come blessing, blessing your holy name. Father, we come giving you all of the praise and giving you all of the glory. We come lifting you up, Lord God, because you are almighty, because you are all-powerful, because you are all-knowing, because you are all-seeing, because you are from everlasting, from everlasting, you are God. Because, God, you, look, you sit high and you look low. Heaven is your throne and earth is your footstool. The clouds are your dust under your feet we thank you Lord so many things that we could ask you for today but father we come to thank you today we come to bless your name today we come to give you glory today we come to lift you up today we come Lord God thanking you for your goodness thanking you for your mercy we come thanking you for your grace Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We said, breathe on us today. Breathe on every home. Breathe on every community. Breathe on every nation. Breathe on every town, every country. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. We come, Lord God, saying, move by your spirit today. You know every issue. You know every problem. We come asking you to move by your spirit. Not by might, not by power, but just move by your spirit, Lord God. We come asking you to take over, Lord God. Take over and do what you want to do. Take over, Lord God. You are in control because the earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof in the world and they that dwell therein belongs to you. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we bless your name today. God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, even in these times. We thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God, because you are still God. You are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are unchangeable. We thank you, Lord God. We 
thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are God. Regardless of what is going on, you are still God and you are still in control. Father, we ask you to move, God. Touch the bodies of the sick, God. Just wave your hand across it, Lord God. Touch, Lord God, in our nursing homes, in the hospitals, God. Touch, Lord God. Let your word heal, Father God. And Lord God, we ask you right now to touch every person that are in bereavement, Father God. Confidence, strength, and strength as only you can. And Lord God, we thank you for being God. We thank you, Lord God, for the blood. We thank you, Lord God. We bless your name today, God. We thank you, Lord God. We can't thank you enough, Father, for what you're doing and for what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord God, for cleaning us all up, God. Clean us all up, God. Clean us up, Lord God. Get us ready to come back into the building. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, individually and collectively. Father, we thank you. So, Lord God, we ask you to touch our pastor today, Lord. Move throughout his body, God. Anoint, Father. Let your anointing grow and destroy every yoke, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we don't come with a bow down head, but we come giving you praise and we come giving you thanks. So we thank you, Father. Touch, Lord God, every member, Lord God, of a top family. Touch the one that are not a top family. Just move, Father. So we thank you now, Lord God. Woo, touch every household. And now, Lord God, I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus over every family that is represented here today. I plead the blood of Jesus over our virtual family, Lord God. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
just so good, just for loving us. Yeah. In spite of what's going on in the land, we can say, God, love us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture said, with this love and kindness that he drew us, we know he loves us. And in spite of what you're feeling like, and in spite of what it's look like going on in your life, you may be sick. Yeah. You might not be well. You might have some issues with finances. But look, let me tell you, brother, sister, let me tell you right now, look inside that camera. I got a feeling. Yeah that everything is going to be all right. Listen, listen. That's the privilege that we have as believers. We can speak those things that are not as though they already are. So right now in your situation, we can say, I got a feeling yeah. that everything is going to be all right. Come on, clap your hands.
yeah, 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 ye
And it comes in various forms. It may happen on your job, as I said, maybe be in a relationship. It might happen even when you're going through a financial situation and you find yourself in a place where all you can depend on is what you believe about God. Someone no doubt walks away, walks out of your life. Your money gets funny. Your boss starts to acting crazy for no reason. Well, look this way, my brother. Listen, my sister. The Bible is clear when it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek after him. And you do know that a faith that's not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Y'all already know that. And need I remind you that in this, in, in this time of, this is indeed a time of testing that we find ourselves in. You know that we're in a season where God requires us to trust him like never before. We're in a place now in our lives where we have to build up our faith, a faith that allows us to see it through whatever it is we're going through. The Bible reminds us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so as believers, we walk by what? By faith and not by sight. Therefore, I've got to say to myself every morning, I've got to speak to myself and to my God. And I've got to remind myself that God is releasing me from whatever it is that's trying to hinder or hold me back. God is pushing me forward and giving me clarity and understanding about what I'm going through. Even when I don't completely understand it, I've got to continue to trust God. Yes, in the good, the bad, and even the ugly that we have to endure. And you know, this, this moment that we're in, this season that's upon us, it ought not be taken for granted. I mean, when you consider all of the protests and the demands for equality and for what we are trying to accomplish as a people, you know that it's for a purpose, don't you? The demands for justice will not be lost or forgotten. And we all have a responsibility as believers to make a difference. So we thank God for those who have paid the way for us. And I'm here to remind somebody who's looking at the preacher today, we didn't make it by ourselves. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. We're standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. And everything that you and I have is connected to those who went before us. And we need to remind those who are coming behind us of the importance and the significance of the struggle. We've got to vote. We've got to be about civil rights. We need to teach this generation that's coming behind us that they can't expect to be handed things on a silver platter. But they must get involved in the march. They must get involved in the protest. They must achieve and they must pray and believe and have faith and trust the timing of God. Because all of those who went before us and went through the struggle are yet still, and those who are yet still fighting for civil rights, no doubt face personal challenges and of their faith and a trying time in their situations. A testing of their faith, no doubt, took place in trials they had, perhaps on many kinds, some of which probably made them want to give up or throw in the towel. Have you ever been caught in a situation where you were thinking about giving up or throwing in the towel? But just like our forefathers, they persevered. They kept the faith. They, they saw it through. They passed the test. They didn't give up. They didn't give out. They fought the good fight of faith. Can I encourage somebody? Can I tell somebody to not to give up, not to throw in the towel, but hold on to God's unchanging hands, to fight the good fight of faith, to see it through and hear something from God, and God will show you something. Just like our forefathers, they didn't succumb to the pressures of their day. They they remain focused in their faith and steadfast in their desire. Somebody ought to say amen. And we praise God today for the spirits of those who have gone before us. And we give him honor today because he brought them from a mighty long way and he's going to bring us through. There have been challenges in all of our lives where it looks like no hope was on the horizon. No help for our hurt, no joy for the journey. And the dreams that lingered in our mind 
they somehow turned into nightmares. But know this, we serve a prevailing God. He's more powerful than any force we can imagine. He's a God of mercy. We serve a forgiving God. Aren't you glad about that? We serve a loving God. We serve a God who gives us a chance and another chance and another chance, and he looks beyond our faults, and he gets right to our needs. And even though we made mistakes in the past, aren't you glad that we serve a God who never gave up on us? But somebody's looking at me this morning, and you're still stuck in the past, and it's stopping you from moving forward in your future. Yet you're holding on to the familiar, and you're afraid of the unfamiliar. You're trying to figure out God's business. Surely you know that the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. But I hear somebody say it to me today. How do I learn how to be patient, Reverend, in a time of trouble? How do I learn how to hold my peace in a time of pandemic? How do I endure until the end to see it through and trust the timing of God? Well, you know, it's critical for us in this season of uncertainty to stabilize our faith and not lose our momentum. Well, let's look at this text and see if James won't help us get a clearer understanding of what we have to do in order to see it through how to handle our adversities, how to handle setbacks when they come, how to go through a season of pandemic, trials, and yes, even tribulations, so it won't hinder or block what God has in store for us. Well, as believers, we have a spirit about us and a God who supports us that reminds us that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. And just as those who have gone before us, all of us will be tried and all of us will be tested. And so here's what James says. Watch this. James says, it's a certainty that trials will come. That's what James is saying. In other words, it's possible that you could get down to your last. It's a possibility that things might get worse before they get better. It's a possibility that someone who's listening to the preacher today might even lose your income. It's a possibility you won't have anything to stand on and nobody to turn to. And when that happens, not if that happens, but when. Somebody say, but when. Come on, type that in. Say, but when. When that happens, that's a clear indication that it's a testing of your faith. Sometimes in order to get through the door that God has opened, you have to shut the door that you open yourself. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? Because doors that allow you to trust more in yourself than in the power of God, that's a door that you need to close. Sometimes some things have to go wrong to appreciate what God is trying to do right. Well, maybe God is getting you ready for your healing. Maybe God is setting you up for your deliverance. Maybe God is getting you ready for your overflow. And the only way you're going to be able to see it is for something to go wrong. That sounds like some bad news, doesn't it? But God many times puts us in a crucible of suffering so that he can get out of us what we won't get out of ourselves. Well, there are three things here that James is telling us to understand how we ought to handle our situations as we go through. He says, count it all joy. He also reminds us, and I see this clearly, to stimulate your faith. That's the first point. We got to stimulate our faith. But not only do we have to stimulate our faith, regardless to what we're going through, we got to count it all joy. And then we got to give God praise. Let me see if I can touch on those three things in the next five minutes, and I'll take my seat. Look at verse number two. He says, count it all joy when you fall. In other words, when, when under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. When that happens, first point is stimulate your faith. You've got to 
uh, bring attention to how God has brought you out in the past and he's well able to bring you out now. You've got to be attentive in this season. You've got to stimulate your faith. You've got to be observant, stimulate our faith because God is trying to get our attention. He wants us to be aware for something I believe is about to happen and we have to keep our spiritual antennas up. You've got to encourage yourself in this season and you've got to speak over your situation. You must become passionate, if you will, about believing God. And then you've got to say to yourself, I will push myself to a place of praise. When was the last time you told yourself, I got to push myself to a place of praise? When was the last time you said, I've got to make sure my spiritual antennas are up? I will raise my level of expectation. Because many times in life, we allow our spirits to go to sleep. But know this, that if God be for you, it does not matter who or what is against you. Somebody ought to say amen. Therefore, we must put our spirit on high alert because you've got to be aware in this season now, and it's important of how you connect all of the different spirits that's coming your way. Because during this season, you've got to be careful about who and who you listen and what you listen to, but be clear and be intentional that you're connected to the spirit of God. And when you're connected to the Spirit of God, you can count it all joy. That leads to my second point, which is count it all joy. I'm not just talking about any kind of joy. I'm talking about Holy Ghost joy. So hear me today. Stop sitting around looking like you don't have a way out. And you're producing a pity party after a pity party. God has been good to you. God has given you today new mercies. And we deserved his judgment, but he kept us from getting what we deserve. So whatever you're going through, my brother, whatever it is you're faced with, my sister, you ought to still have joy. You've got to stimulate your faith and count it all joy. Don't let your spirit go to sleep. Refresh yourself. Shake yourself. Get up. Go for a walk, and you know that God is with you and the reason to rejoice. As a matter of fact, you ought to carry a rejoicing spirit whether you're going through something or not. You ought to have a smile on your face because when you begin to think about how God sustained you, you begin to think about how blessed you are. Everyone is going through something, but we must understand we're not the only ones. We're not the one to first experience setbacks or difficulties or attacks, but we must look back at those who ran this race before us and know that no test, no temptation that comes our way is beyond the course of what others had to endure. And so all we need to do is just count it all joy and God will never let us down. I'm here to decree and I declare that God will never let you down. Come on, give God some praise. And you got to say to yourself, I'm coming out of this. You got to encourage yourself and say, I'm overcoming. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm on my way out. I might be down right now, but I'm on my way out. I must trust God and know that he's working it out for my good. Because when you've got joy on the inside, it does something for your countenance. I may be going through, but I still got joy. Is that anybody's testimony today? So I'm going to stimulate my faith. I'm going to count it all joy. God has put too much on the inside of us so that we can handle whatever we face with. Now, that's a good place to give God praise. So stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop sitting quiet. Stop acting like you don't have a reason to give God praise. After all you've been through, how dare you allow a spirit of defeat to come upon you? You've got to count it all joy. And I bind the spirit of defeat right now. I speak to that spirit. And I, we got to stop giving the devil credit that he doesn't deserve. You ought to have a way about you that whatever you're going through, nobody knows about it but you and God. Is there anybody who's looking at the preacher today that's going through and folks look at you and say, my, don't you look good. But if they only knew your story. If they only knew what you had to go through to get to where you are, how God kept you and how, how it was nobody but God, how people counted you out, but God. Somebody say, but God. Come on, type, but God right there. Listen, in this season, we need to stimulate our faith, 
count it all joy and give God the praise. Listen, the Bible says in everything, give thanks. You, you can't have victory without a battle. You may be down, but I'm here to decree and declare that you're coming out because God is our refuge. God is our strength and he's a present help in a time of trouble. So even though I might be faced with difficulties that I don't completely understand, I've got a made-up mind. I've stimulated my faith. I count it all joy, and I give God the praise. Come on, let's give him some praise right there. Hallelujah. God, we honor you, we love you, and we yet give you praise. We thank you today for your presence. We thank you today for a reminder that there will be a testing of our faith. But God, we decree and we declare even today that we're going to count it all joy, we're going to stimulate our faith, and we're going to yet give you praise. So now, God, that man and that woman, that boy, that girl, under the sound of my voice, who's no doubt struggling and trying to make sense of this season, pandemic and trials and tribulations, Help them to put their trust and their faith in you. So we love you and we honor you. And we thank you now for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can somebody give God some praise right there? Hallelujah. He's worthy of all of our praise. And even as we prepare for this invitation, we hope that someone out there who's listening perhaps wants to give their life to the Lord. You don't have to wait till we gather in person, but you can go ahead and type right there in the box. Pastor, I want to surrender my life to the Lord. I've been going through a test, and I know that I have to stimulate my faith. I have to count it all joy, and I have to yet give God praise. So if that's you today, the Bible says with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, one's believe. It's very simple. Accept him as Lord and Savior. Believe in your heart. And then ask God to forgive you of your sins. And if you do that, then you shall be saved. And so we hope that's your prayer and that's your testimony today. In Jesus' name.
know about you, but I want the Lord to use me today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. What an awesome word today. Awesome, awesome word. And the sermon today, a testing of our faith, leads us right into our time of giving. Amen. For giving is definitely a test of our faith. Now, you need to stimulate your faith today. Amen. Stimulate your faith by trusting in an almighty and wise God to take care of all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. For in Malachi, it tells us to, to give, amen? It tells us that we need to give unto the Lord. And he's promised that he would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we shall not have room enough to receive. We want to remind you today that there are multiple ways to give, amen? You can give uh, online through PayPal. You can give by text to give. You can give by cash app. And you can give the old-fashioned way. Just put a stamp on an envelope, put that check in the mail, amen? Or you can drive by the church and drop it off in that secured mailbox outside. Any way you want the Lord to use you through your giving, you can do that right now. And for those of us who are in the sanctuary, Miss Mary is standing ready to receive of our tithes and offerings on today. Let us go to God in prayer as we prepare to give of our tithes and our offerings. God, we thank you on today. We bless you and we honor you. We give you praise for all that you have done in our lives. God, you can continue to sustain us even through COVID-19. God, you've taken care of us. Some of us, oh God, did not know what tomorrow would bring. But we know, oh God, that you hold all of our tomorrows. So we thank you, God, for providing all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So as we prepare to give on this morning, we thank you for co continuously blessing us so that we might be a blessing to others. We count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. God, praise God. I just enjoyed that word today. I don't know about you, but that word was awesome today. Amen. So now we have come to a time in our service where it's most, most, most important. And I hope you have gotten your uh, elements together and you are ready to commune and fellowship together amen amen so let's go to our word it said when jesus had taken some bread and given thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and the same way he took the cup after they had eaten saying this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant of my blood. So I want you to take your bread. Father God, we thank you now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your broken body. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave your body, Lord God, for each and every one of us. And Father God, before we go any further, I ask you to forgive us now, Lord God, before we even eat this bread that represents your broken body. Forgive us individually and collectively. In Jesus' name, let us eat. And now, Father God, as we take this cup that represents your blood, 
represent the blood that you shed on Calvary, Lord God. We thank you, God, for the blood, Lord God, the blood that was poured out for each and every one of us. We thank you for the blood, Lord God, that represents the blood of the blood that never loses power. We thank you, Lord God, for your blood. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us drink together. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able just to sit and commune together. We thank you, Lord God, for your broken body. We thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we give God praise on today for another Lord's Day. We thank you for joining us for our virtual worship service. We just have a few reminders for you. Don't forget, Bible study on tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We will conclude the book of James. And we're going to talk a little bit, uh, finish up the end of Bible stu study, talking about entanglements amen entanglements amen so join us for bible study six o'clock p.m on tomorrow which is monday and then if you miss on six o'clock on tomorrow you can join us uh, via conference call on wednesday at 12 noon for bible study the same bible study will take place uh tuesdays join pastor murray uh, for inspirations in the morning 7 to 7 15 a.m and then on wednesday night intercessory prayer that same conference call number intercessory prayer 8 30 p.m we're just 30 minutes 8 30 to 9 o'clock for intercessory prayer we hope you can can join on the in on these important very important times of worship uh, our youth also have i think one more bible study this coming tuesday uh at, I'm sorry, this, yes, this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And then they're going to take a little summer break. So young people, join in uh, via Zoom for Youth Bible Study, The Hunger Games, on this coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Let's keep our bereaved families lifted up in prayer. Sister Lena Jackson and the loss of her cousin Tyrone Webb, that funeral service was on yesterday. She also lost her uh, nephew uh, Kevin Dennis brother Kevin used to visit us frequently here at ATOP um, and his service will be held on Saturday August the 1st lift up sister Fanny Booker in the loss of her nephew Corey Tiggs uh, the funeral arrangements are pending at this time also lift, lift up sister Marcia Grant in the loss of her brother that funeral service will be held in St. Louis, Missouri on this coming Friday, July 31st. Also continue to lift up all of our sick and shut in in your prayers also. And again, ATOP, we miss you so very much. And we will be glad, so glad, when we can meet together again. Well, as we get ready to go down from this place, let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this moment in time that you have allowed us to commune together with you. We thank you for blessing us with an awesome word because we know that our faith will be tested and tried in the fire. But we know, oh God, if we hold on to our faith, that you will be with us through it all. So we thank you on today as we go into this week, God. We ask that you would bless us and allow us to hold on to this word until we see what the end will be. Bless us and keep us through another week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Atop. See you on next week.